Hey, it's Lester Martin again from Starburst Academy, and what we did a few moments ago is we did some backdrop. We talked about the cache services, the materialized views, and table scan redirections about what they are. We went in the UI and made sure that we had a, a, a role that had enough permissions should we uh, enable all this to do its job. So what we'll do now is make the necessary changes to an existing cluster. So I do have a running cluster here somewhere. I thought I had it right in front of me, but I guess I moved it. Let's see if we can find that guy. Here he is, Starburst Enterprise. Uh, that This is what we set up here, that caching uh, kind of service world. All right, so we got that going. I'm going to scoot that over a little. Come back over here. And how did I deploy that? Well, I'm using um, Kubernetes world, and in fact, I'm running on Amazon. So what I really have, if I look really closer at the bottom, is I'm not running this right now, but I have a Helm upgrade command referencing, you know, version 425. I got a couple of YAMLs in there, just some backdrop registry access. The real meat and potatoes that I'll show you are this um, uh, this BIAC production cluster setup YAML. I'm going to make some changes to that right now to enable all this. And then we have a separate uh, catalog YAML that I'll show you. You have to make some changes there as well. Where do you find all that good stuff? Like I said, uh, back over here, uh, there's a lot of information here. And they give you a high level what you're about to do. Make some property changes universally and then make some changes in the uh, catalog themselves. But they also point you to, they say, if you're using Helm, uh, click here and go to the you know, uh, kind of write up specifically about doing this with Kubernetes. And then there's a lot of backdrop that we've already set up already just to have a cluster running. I'll just go down here to this link that says, what do we need to do? We need to make sure we have a cache.properties file with a number of properties. Um, and then uh, we need to go to the catalogs file and make sure we have a, enough properties uh, on the catalogs that we want to participate in this space. So let's just jump over there and uh, kind of streamline that a little bit. Here is my YAML, that uh, my primary YAML that's setting up most of my properties. And here we go. i uh, got a section here about uh, Etsy files. And I want to go ahead and just uncomment a little section I have right here. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight cache properties. I want to create a cache properties value. I'm pretty sure I got a, not a refactor, I got a... Uh, Toggle, line, comment, boom. They're back in business now. We won't cover all these. We'll just talk about them a little bit. There needs to be a database to kind of help this work. That's something I had previously set up. It's calling it EKS, EKS redirections. There's that user that I said we're going to, um, a system user that this is going to run as, caching service. That's the one we gave a lot of permissions to and rights to based on uh, creating a role, etc. Just basically, uh, we're gonna have, have a you know where's the where's the coordinator, so on and so forth, and uh, come with these, a couple of these things are pretty much hey when does this run? So we're basically saying hey, let's just wait about every minute, including an initial delay of a minute when the system starts up before it even tries to start running the cache service. Now the cache service, especially the table scan redirections, are driven by usually some kind of uh, list of rules. So what you see on line 68 here is it says, hey, we're gonna have a secret called the ca uh, cache rules JSON. So I have a cache rules JSON file here that we're gonna look at and then we'll make a secret out of it. So it's not around. Um, high level stuff, just some settings to say when and where. Remember we created a hive.cache schema. Yep, that's what we're gonna say put information there. We're gonna give things a variety of properties. Again, I'm not gonna run through them all but they're about how long uh, should it take to load something, how long should we allow something that's you know past the loading time, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of five minute type things I set up. That's universal. And then um, the rules are often gonna be mainly focused on uh, the, re the redirects. So what you see here, it says, hey, in uh, bootcamp.publicorders, I want you to you know make a uh, a hidden or secret kind of copy, a redirection based copy of that table. I want you to uh, refresh it every 24 hours. And where do I want you to store it? Go ahead and store it in that same place at Hive Cache Environment. So that has to be there now to make this one come to effect. We'll probably need to uh, create a little secret here. Let me see if I can uh, get my I have a little shortcut over here in the background. 
Uh, there it is. Let me steal that. I guess I'll just type it. Maybe just as fast. Let me get rid of all this on my screen here so we don't run anything. Okay. You know, give you a few lines here. So I'm going to just create a, a cube CTL, create a secret. A secret's going to be called uh, uh, a generic secret, sorry. Um, for create cube CTL, create secret generic. The secret is called cash rules. That's what we put in the property file just a moment ago. And we're going to create it from a file. That file name is right here in this same folder, cache-rules. That's where the JSON is sitting. And we'll push that. We didn't have to actually change or save that thing that was already ready to go. So I'm going to get that taken care of. So that's in place. And if I think back over here, that actually takes care of the cache rules. That takes care of, we didn't run this new Helm chart, but we can save it for sure. And it's the one that references the um, uh, right there on line 68, those cache rules we did. So that's kind of the backdrop universally, and then we need to go to our catalogs and uh, enable which catalogs uh, can participate in this stuff. Absolutely, what I'm going to do is turn on number line 31 and 32. This is my boot camp. This is what uh, I said it earlier, my, uh, my SQL, I'm sorry. Uh, this is my post-grads database. And um, there you go, that's just where it is and that kind of stuff. That's just the connector in general, but I enable these two properties. Hey, redirection is okay and then where is this caching service so we have a different process that's focused on helping out and doing that pretty simple on something like this one uh, i'll go a little deeper i'll go and turn it on on some of these other ones there we go my sql enabled and then um i'll just stop at this next one there's a few more prop two more catalogs but let me just get these first few going so this is just kind of a standard turn those on tell them where to go now, I'm trying to configure the entire um, like cache service thing. So, so what I'm going to also do is grab these fields. There's only about four of them. These were listed in that uh, page I showed you just a minute ago. That said, hey, what are some possible things we need to leverage? And let's see if I can grab them in the background. Eh, that's all right. We'll just run with this connector. Yep, 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 yep. Um, well, there's only four things. So just do it that way. And this just says, this is for the materialized views. So we could have table scan re redirection using uh, cache services without materialized views. But materialized views are something, you know, as long as the uh, service is there, we can enable this on certain connectors. Absolutely, on this one, this is a Hive connector. Uh, and we're turning it on. And if you look really closely, what are we kind of saying? We're kind of saying, hey... You know, hey, there's a namespace here. The main thing to look for is this. I'm sorry, the line 65. Yep, we want to we want to enable a, a materialized views here. And where do we want to store? Um, I called it earlier like a, a, a materialized table. Um, uh, I was trying to think what what the other phrase it just came and ran right past me. Storage tables, what sometimes people refer to that the hidden table. I'm going to show you those when we run it. All right, so let me save that. And I think. You know, only way to prove it sometimes is run. I think that's going to be everything we need. And I'm just going to find the old plast last time I ran the, uh, the, the upgrade. There it is, the same two YAMLs that I just looked at. And this YAML is expecting, um, expecting da, 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 the secrets to be found, etc. So that's going to kick off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause on recording because, you know, this can take a moment here while all this bounces. Uh, and I'll watch it and look into the coordinator, and we'll see if we can see some messages in the coordinator saying that uh, everything came up. So I'll pause for now. All right, the server did get started right here. You see that uh, 47, 38, all that kind of good stuff. And there's actually a minute delay because of the properties that we said, how long should we pause before we start up? So I'll pause again and wait uh, for a few messages to fly by to know that the service is running. Well, in fact, it looks like I had a problem with my JSON. It's actually complaining at this particular node here, this default on partition import config. Now, the good news is I'm pretty sure I don't need that for now. So what I'm going to do here, I'm looking back at kind of the what I expect. I don't see that listed here. I'm going to actually um, uh, remove that and try to redeploy. And I'll wait and see uh, when it does come up well. All right, so let's do that real quick. Hold on one second. All right, there we go. Got it going. Actually, I uh, ended up making it two minutes apart. 
just to have my helm uh, get going again. But it was ultimately I pulled that extra section out, kept it straightforward as the simple straightforward dock showed, and just kind of pulled that piece out that I'm doing some experimenting with and just kept it simple. All right, and there we go. I see that my cache refresh service is off and running, and you know, you could scroll through here and miles and miles I have a set up a debug of information, but I'm not getting that exception. All right, I'm going to stop this video um, of making the changes, and then we'll do uh, two more videos, one to verify that the table scan redirect works, and then one more after that to verify that the materialized views work. All right, thanks.